What's up guys? So today I just stepped 10 million years into the past. Here, come check this out. So I found this really cool creek and this creek isn't just any normal body of water. This creek is actually cutting through the ancient oceanic limestone from 10 to 15 million years ago. Look at all that. That is the old ocean floor being eroded. And this stuff is deep too. That pocket's about three feet deep. And there's a little waterfall up there you can kind of see. There's more sandstone over there. But today I'm gonna dig around because these pockets are filled with fossils and shark teeth from creatures that lived, you know, 10 to 15 million years ago when this place was an ocean. I also slipped and fell in here. That's why it's all mucked up and I'm a little bit wet now. But that's not nearly as wet as I'm going to get because we're gonna find some treasure today and get wet and probably malaria while we're doing it. And I wasn't kidding about the malaria part. There are a lot of mosquitoes out here. So that waterfall's behind me and right in front of me, there's a huge stretch and there's a ton of gravel, that good oceanic gravel being eroded. That's what I'm gonna dig through. But right on the bank right here, there's a dead animal carcass. You can see there's a, a vertebrae here. It goes all the way up and there's two jaw bones right next to each other. And I'm guessing either the skull is somewhere around here or someone came by and picked up the skull. This is private property, but sometimes people come through here and actually trespass from the road that's nearby and they come through here and they leave gravel on the banks and they take skulls. So even though most of the stuff is oceanic fossils, like this place is oceanic in nature, you're gonna find crabs, clams, shark fossils, all of that. You can also find mammal fossils here, like mammoth bones, mastodon bones, giant sloth, and that's because 100,000 years ago when all that was going on, this entire creek was still here. And so animals would come through here and drink out of this creek. Well, this place is actually more of a swamp, but animals still came here and they drank out of this creek and they did cool stuff and they died and their bones got buried and fossilized on the edges of this creek, but not in the oceanic layer, in the higher up clay layers, like right here. So there's a chance you can just walk past and there's just a mammoth tusk sticking out. So check this out, all this oceanic clay right here, these are all just balled, balled up clay balls from when the creek comes through and this clay gets eroded and it gets tumbled in these balls. Anyway, I just found this. This is a piece of bone from a whale or a dolphin. That is some sort of marine mammal bone. You can t I can tell just because of the density. Um, I don't think that's gonna be manatee. That's either gonna be dolphin or whale or some sort of porpoise. I think that's jawbone or some sort of rib piece. You can see here how I know it's bone, all those little holes, that's the marrow cavities. And those are what produce your white blood cells. We have them too, if you cut open my arm and looked in my bone. Um, but that's how I can tell, cause it's kind of like a sponge and you can see there's no spongy material on the outside. That's the outside of the bone, but the inside is filled with that marrow. <laughs> Check that out. I actually sipped it up. It looks like someone's house key. I don't think that's too old either. That is a very unfortunate day for someone probably wandering in this creek when they shouldn't have been. So I actually got my first fossil and it looks like there's a few cool things in the sift actually. So this is my first fossil. It's a tiger shark tooth. And this is a posterior tiger shark tooth because you can tell just how much that tooth is slanted. This was in the very, very back of the jaw. And then alongside it, there's a bunch of little bone fragments. All of this is fossilized marine mammal bone, likely dolphin. And this is the wing from a dolphin or whale vertebra that is a part of the vertebra. And then right next to it was this little tiny bull shark tooth. And that fossilization color is really cool. You can see it's that cream color, the same color as all this oceanic sediment. So that was likely fossilized around this layer. So it hasn't been reworked. It didn't come from, you know, way up there. It just freshly deposited out of this layer in front of me. I am really liking the spot that I'm digging. I got this bone, which this is modern. It's not like a fossilized freaking dire wolf leg, but next to it, is a little marble and that is a turn of the century probably 1910s 1920s and look at all the color on that there's like six different colors here these are pretty rare to find out here so i'm happy marbles a marble like a hundred years ago there were some old houses up here and kids would come down to the creek and they'd shoot marbles and sometimes i'd lose them in the water and i sift them up you know once every few weeks which is kind of kind of rare i've moved down a ways from the waterfall and i just found two little lemon shark teeth and if you've ever wondered if pufferfish have teeth or not, well, the answer's kinda. This is a set of pufferfish plates, and they don't really have teeth, but they have these plates that they crush together. And this is, I believe, a top plate. And they kinda act like pliers, and they just crush up their food with these huge, dense, bony plates. It's not really teeth of more of just a big, stony rock that they use to crush their food. Another species that uses tooth plates is the stingray. Now the stingrays have these plates that look slightly different than pufferfish, but it works in the same respect as they have these plates that they grind back and forth in their mouth to crush up food. And it has to be more or less soft food. They can't go eating crabs or anything, but these can crush up fish bones to an extent. Well, do you guys see that? A little bull shark tooth. Not the craziest colors, but that is a 10 million year old bull shark tooth. Not bad. So you guys are gonna have to trust me on this one because I understand this really doesn't look like anything to most of you, 
but this is, if you believe me or not, a piece of mammoth tooth. Now the mammoth teeth are about the size of an American football. They're massive. And they have these little platelets that are covered in a material called enamel. Now our teeth have enamel on them. That's that white coating that protects like the nerves and the softer insides of the tooth. The mammoth teeth have really thick enamel coating. And this is a little tiny fragment of mammoth enamel. It's really hard to understand or visualize, but you can see the two plates that make it up and the different colors. If you see it from the side, the top is lighter than the bottom. So this would have been the outside and this would have been the inside of a mammoth tooth. This would have fallen through the sifter if I wasn't careful. The littlest, tiniest pufferfish plate. Wow, look at that. That is the tooth of a white shark. Now a white shark is basically the ancient ancestor to our modern day great white shark. And it's an evolutionary ancestor. So these guys do not exist anymore because they evolved into the great white shark. In case you guys are still curious, I am still finding these whale bones. This is another wing to a whale vertebra that would have came out of this layer right here. And usually these things are huge, but they just get broken up as the creek cuts through. And you know, storms happen, these things tumble around because they're you know millions of years old. They break up into these fragments and then eventually just break up into nothingness and just sand and gravel. So I'm still digging out the same part of the creek I've been digging out and check this out. That was a lot of outs I just said. Anyway, this is a massive fragment of white shark tooth. This thing would have been about two inches long. You can see the enamel on the back but that would have been a white shark tooth or histolis tooth about two inches long compared to the one inch one I just found a few minutes ago. No way, look at that. Another big old chunk of white shark tooth. You don't find these chunks often. This is another probably two inch tooth and it's a completely different color. So I can tell this is from a different white shark tooth in the exact same spot. Oh my God, you guys are not gonna believe what I just dug up. I was scooping through that sift where I just found that big old chunk of white shark tooth and I flipped a rock. Oh my gosh. That is one of the biggest tiger shark teeth I have ever seen. Wow, that is a tiger shark tooth. And I don't even know what to say. Like I'm kind of at a loss for words. That is one of the biggest. They usually don't get this big. They get like this big usually. This is about twice the size of a large tiger shark tooth. That's gonna be one of the biggest I've ever found. Wow, very nice. Look at the color on that. Notice the tip, how that there's a little black spot there. That's what's known as feeding damage. And this shark was so big that it was likely eating whales when it was alive. Whales are small dolphins. And it bit into a dolphin so violently that it broke the tip of its tooth and left that little mark right there. And it's still there preserved millions of years later. Here's a bull shark tooth I just scooped out and you can see something different. It looks different than the other one I found. Here's the one I found before. Why do they look so different? Well, that's because this one was a lower tooth and this one's an upper tooth. Now the lower teeth are more for holding. That's why they're kind of pointed like needles and the upper teeth are more serrated and used for slicing. That's why they look more like knives. So they would have gone like this in the jaw and then another tiny one here and a big one here and a tiny one here. And that's how they would have gone. Stingrays can get pretty big. And if you guys remember the stingray plate I showed you earlier, here's another one if I can find where I just put it. Right here. This is a massive, humongous, ginormous stingray plate, but not as big as they get. I've seen some about the thickness of my finger. So compared to this, this is about mid-sized. In the same sift, a bull shark tooth, but it's missing the tooth part itself. And that wasn't because of it rolling down the creek. That is more of that feeding damage. Now this is really bad feeding damage. That bit down onto something violently and basically the entire tooth just crumbled. And this is all that's left of it. However, this part still shed from the shark's mouth perfectly and fossilized perfectly. Let's take a quick break from sifting to take a look at this ocean layer because I don't think I've showed you guys it up close. So notice there's quite a bit of orange in here and it looks really weird. It's like speckled with these orange splotches all over. Here's some more right here. There's more orange there, more orange there. So millions of years ago, back when this was all ocean, this was the bottom of the ocean and there was things like clams and oysters specifically that would hang out and bury themselves in the sand. As they grew and grew older, they took minerals, especially iron, in that they used to make up their shells and their bodies. And they would die and get buried in this oceanic sediment where the rest of their body would erode away throughout the millions of years, leaving behind all the minerals, especially that iron. And as this creek cuts through and erodes where they once died, the shell and stuff is all gone, but those mineral deposits are still there. And so that iron oxidizes and becomes little rust spots where an animal was dead millions of years ago. 
So all of these rust spots are the remains of clams and oysters and crabs and all sorts of creatures. And sometimes you can actually see shell imprints where they once were, but I'm not seeing any right here. I'll try to find one, but in the meantime, let's get back to sifting because I have a pretty good feeling I'm gonna find something cool soon. So I was sifting and I was kind of just not paying attention looking up into those woods right there because there's a little creek and it was just coming down and I just was zoned out entirely. And I looked at my sifter to see what I would had in my sifter and I saw that. Look at that white shark tooth. Perfect, completely perfect histolis tooth. Roots intact, the entire tooth is intact. That is the ancestor to the great white shark. Another one. And you can see it's the same color as the limestone formation here. That is fresh out of the layer. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just got that white shark tooth right there. And I was about to dump this until I saw that. That is a cow shark tooth. If you don't know what a cow shark tooth is, this is basically one of the rarest shark teeth in the entire world. These are still around today and they're about 150 or 175 million years old. These guys were around when the dinosaurs were around and their species have survived for 100 and I think it's 75 million years and they're still around today. This is one of the rarest shark teeth in the entire world. And I cannot believe I just found one. I just found a cow shark tooth. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, oh. there it is, there it is. It didn't fall in the water. It's all good. I was about to say that color is cool too. It's almost matte black. It's probably gonna dry up to be a gray color. I've, got, I've gotten a few of them out of this creek and they usually, the ones that are like this tend to dry up to be gray. So we're gonna see. Dude, you're kidding. You were actually kidding. I just dug right next to that cow shark tooth. Oh, did I just drop it? No, it's right there. Another one. This one's more broken up, but that is another cow shark tooth. Two of them in like five, 10 minutes. How crazy is that? Nope, this isn't real. I refuse it. I found that cow shark tooth right there. That's another one. That's only one of the seven teeth, but that is another cow shark tooth. Three of them of like one of the rarest shark teeth in the world in five minutes, 10 minutes. So there's two reasons there could be so many cow shark teeth here. One, millions of years ago, there was a cow shark hole where they would have laid their eggs and had, you know, their babies and just hung out like their house somewhere around here. And they just had a bunch of teeth scattered around where their house was because that's where they were always at. Or this was a cow shark feeding area where they knew was safe. And so cow sharks would come here and from here often to get food. This could have been some sort of, I don't know, reef with a lot of fish to eat. And there was a few cow sharks that frequented this area and constantly lost teeth that are being eroded. Those are my two options why there's so many here because you don't just find them back to back to back. They're one of the rarest shark teeth in the world. These are all related somehow. I'm digging this entire hole out and I didn't find another cow shark tooth, but I did find another white shark tooth. That is gonna be a lower or actually upper posterior white shark tooth. You can tell because it's slanted to the right. So that would have been in the right side, back of the mouth, actually the left side, back of the mouth because they would have faced this way. So it would have been right here and then the front teeth would come across to here. Rock, nope, more mammoth enamel. Look at those layers and then white on the inside, black on the outside, that is mammoth enamel. This sift is a conglomeration of ocean treasures. One is this massive whale rib chunk. This is a piece of whale rib from around 10 million years ago. And you can just see how thick it is. That's a big old rib. There's probably some big shark teeth here if there's a big rib here. And this is a sea biscuit. Now this is basically the equivalent of a sea urchin from around 30 million years ago. This is from the Eocene. And right here, that little hole is its mouth and it's still fossilized into the limestone. You can see that stuck to it there. That is old. And one of my favorite fossils to find are these sea biscuits. They come in a few different shapes. This is the flat variety. I forget what they call these, but there's also one that literally looks like a biscuit. Like it's a huge thick round piece that looks like a biscuit, like the food. So let me give you guys a little tidbit on Native American history. This shell is an oyster shell. And this thing is about anywhere between 500 to a thousand years old. And the Native American tribes that once lived here would have had oysters that they traded, either shells or entire oysters that they traded from, again, either the Spanish or other Native American tribes nearby that they got all the way from the coast and brought inland. And this is one of those oysters. And a thousand years later, it's still in almost perfect condition. And you can sometimes find these with holes drilled in them where they're used as necklaces or hung around the wrist for currency because they would trade them to one another as a form of currency. So I'm gonna wrap it up for today because it's kind of starting to rain and my back is killing me. But I cannot wait to show you guys what I found because I found a bunch of stuff. Please excuse the mess, there's a lot of random like stuff in here, but this was the haul. I got three complete histolis or white shark teeth. These guys are really rare and I like this one because it's got a blue and yellow fade to it. 
and these two fragments of white shark teeth that are broken, but you can see they're not actually from the same shark because these are both from the same side. So these are two different giant Histolus sharks. And this is pieces of mammoth enamel. We talked about those, I got two of them. A few puffer fish plates, some small bull shark and lemon shark teeth here. Here's some bull shark teeth here. A few stingray plates, two big old tiger shark teeth, a marble, a coin, a sea biscuit echinoid, and three cow shark teeth, including the best one I found from that stretch of creek. This one has one, two, three, four, that has five out of the seven gills. So if I can get one that has all seven, I will be goaded. This one has two and this one has one. So three of them in a five minute span is insane. I've never done that before. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for watching and for all the support you guys have been giving me as I grow my channel and continue to make long-form videos as this has always been my dream since I was a little kid to make long-form videos on YouTube and as was everybody to be a YouTuber when they were younger. So this is just awesome and thank you guys so, so much for watching and just, again, all the support you guys have given me through comments and direct messages and even emails you guys are telling me you guys love what I do. So I read all of it and I thank all of you truly from the bottom of my heart. Till next time, you guys stay safe, stay adventurous, and make sure to get outside and find something cool today.